What's going on everybody, James here from Artificial Entertainment and welcome to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. And in today's video we have a special one where I'm going to show you how to be able to make a faction system in a blueprint only project, which from what I understand up until now was something to be considered not possible. But I'm going to show you how to make the impossible possible. So let's go ahead and dive in. So I have here a fresh project for the most part. I've added in a couple of characters just to make things a little easier. So we have a couple of characters for our AI just to kind of give representation as to what's going to happen. And what we're going to do first is I want to talk a little bit about what is a faction as far as game design goes. Because we all know factions is something like for Skyrim, for example. You know, you have the Brotherhood, you have the Companions, you have the Dawn Guard. You know, you have a ton of different factions all with their own individual names and styles that are according to each belief structure. This is an example of a complex, dynamic faction structure. So this is something that you would have individual names, individual actions and behaviors, all fitting that type of AI structure for that faction type. However, that is not the only type or use of faction. Factions also go down to as simple as a group of characters or a group of AI who are enemy to the player and a group of AI who are friendly to the character, because then you have a group or a faction as enemy and another faction as friendly. So when it comes to factions, it's really as dynamic as you make it. You can make it as simple as enemies and friendlies, or you can make your own individual factions with names and behaviors. So just something to point out, because in today's demonstration, we're just going to be using the very simple enemy and friendly, which are the components already within the affiliation system Unreal Engine gives you. But we're not going to be using that system. We're actually going to be making essentially our own affiliation system. So I have a folder here for tutorials. So I'm going to open this up. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a character blueprint. So we're going to right click, go blueprint class, and then click on character. Now these character blueprints that we're making are going to essentially be the references for each faction type. So you're going to use these and create child actors for your actual NPCs, but these are going to be what I refer to as the master blueprints for the references for each faction. So with that in mind, I'm going to take this and I'm going to name this enemy underscore master. So that way I know this is the master blueprint for this specific faction type. Now we also need a controller that's gonna be specific for this as well. So we're gonna right click, go to blueprint class, all classes, and we're gonna search for AI controller so we can get a controller for this also. And then we're just gonna name this enemy controller. Now, one thing to keep in mind is, again, you're going to need as many blueprints as you have factions. So for the, these are master, but if you have, for example, like a smith guild that you want to have, you would have smith master smith controller. So this way, these are going to be representations of that faction type, not necessarily representations of an individual AI character. Now, we are going to also set up something so our AI can not only see, but be seen. So we need to open up the enemy master blueprint here. And we're not going to put anything as far as a mesh in here, but we do want to go up to the add under components and we want to add AI perception stimuli source. This way it can be registered as a source for other AI types. And if we go over to the details panel under AI perception, we can put register as source for senses, click the little add elements button under the index, change the drop down from none to sight. Now you can also set this up for all of the senses as well. We're just going to use sight for today's demonstration. Now we're also going to go up to the self for the blueprint as well. Go to the details search bar and type in controller. This way we can assign that enemy AI or that enemy controller that we made as well. And then we'll just compile and save. Now what we're going to do is minimize this. And now we're going to pull up the controller and we're going to click on add. And this time we're going to go AI perception because we're going to put the perception component on the controller, but the stimuli source component on the actual blueprint. Now, if we click on the AI perception and go over to the details panel, we'll get the senses config. So we'll add a sense under the sense config and then the index change the drop down from none to AI site config. Now, if we expand this a little bit by using these arrows here and then go to detection by affiliation, this is the core problem of why factions don't work inside of Unreal Engine by default without utilizing this system or something like it. And that is because by default, Unreal Engine uses something called Team ID to be able to actually assess whether something is a neutral, friendly, or enemy. And by default, neutrals, I believe, just detects all Team IDs because everything by default is neutral. In order to be able to set enemies or friendly, though you need to go in and actually modify the internal code using C++ and that's the normal way though that's not this way so we'll make sure all of these are checked making sure the max age is set to one just like what we do in the other AI series here which I am going to be leaving a link at the bottom of this video because this is purely just the faction creation but you're still going to want to know how to make AI so I'm going to leave a link to the playlist at the bottom of this video for those of you who want to also make the AI as well because this faction system will actually work 
in conjunction with everything that I show you in all four current AI videos. But now that we have the controller and the blueprint itself having the perception pieces, we're actually going to take both of these and we're going to hold shift to highlight them both and then control D. This way we can duplicate them without actually having to remake and redo everything. And we can just name this instead of enemy master. This is going to be friendly underscore master. And then the controller for enemy controller two is going to be friendly underscore controller. So this way we can actually go into the friendly master blueprint and then just assign that controller versus actually having to go through and assign the perception source and all that stuff. We can literally just have that already in by copy and pasting. And then we'll just select the friendly controller from the drop down here and then compile and save this. So now we have our master sort of components here that are going to be used for all the AI types. So what we're going to do is right click, go to new folder, and we're going to type in master. And we're going to take all of these and move them into the master folder. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to start creating the individual folders for our AI types. And the first one we're going to do is going to be friendly. So I'm going to right click new folder and type in friendly, and then we'll open this up. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click new folder and also create EQS folder as well, because we need an EQS to actually be able to give us the information of the different types of factions and the combination of the EQS system in conjunction with utilizing child actors is actually what makes this faction system work. So we'll go ahead and open up the EQS. We're going to right click, go to artificial intelligence, and we're going to go environment query. Now this one, what we're going to do is we're going to name this player underscore detection. Depending on how many factions you have and how dynamic you want these factions to behave, you might have to create additional EQS functions for all additional faction types. So for example, if you want the smiths to be able to interact with the assassins or with the guards or with another section of faction, you'll need to be able to make a way for them to detect the differences between those factions. And that's something where you'll have to create a lot of different EQSs. But the beautiful thing is, is that Unreal Engine 5 has actually stabilized the EQS functions to where I have put so many different functions on a single behavior system and really didn't get any lag. Now, and I know you guys are probably used to seeing me run right around 30 frames per second, maybe 40, but realistically, Basically, I run around 60 or 70 when I'm not on a recording, um, and that continues on even with high levels of EQSs and behavior functions and a whole bunch of crazy stuff. With that aside, let's go ahead and open up this player detection EQS. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull off of the root, and we're going to put perceived actors as the node in here, which if you guys watch the new AI series, you're probably somewhat familiar with this. But go up to the allowed actor class. We change it from none, and this is for the player detection. So we can go third person character. So you can do first person character, third person character, custom character class, whatever you're trying to do. But just make sure to set this one as the character that you're going to be using. And also make sure under the sense to use, make sure to set it from none to AI sense site. And then we'll just go ahead and save, minimize, and we're going to create another system. So we're going to go artificial intelligence, environment query, and this one is going to be enemy detection. Now, the cool thing about the EQS system is that realistically, both of these can be used if you just have an enemy detection and a player detection. You're not using like a dynamic detection system based off of five or six different factions and a bunch of different interactions based off of like a reputation system and all of this type of stuff. You can realistically use the EQS functions across all the behavior trees. So you can actually put these in the master folder if you want, but I'm just showing you if you wanted to make it more dynamic, it is better to separate them out because you're going to have a lot of EQS functions that are going to be specific to each type of faction. But we'll go ahead and open up the enemy detection now. And we're going to pull off of the root here and we're going to again get perceived actors. However, this is where we're actually going to change how we do things. And this is where it gets really, really cool. If we go up to the allowed actor class from the drop down here, we just type in enemy and we go enemy master, right? So we've got enemy master blueprint. So every, so the way that this works is the detection system utilizes team ID to be able to actually set whether something is, you know, neutral enemy or friendly. When you create a child actor of a, another blueprint, it actually gets associated with the same team ID. So what this does is it tells that we want the perception system to only get this information but because of the way the perception system works by default by generating information off of team id tags all the child actors that we make of this blueprint will be detected as well meaning that we can have a bunch of different code and blueprints and behavior trees and a whole bunch of different stuff happening as their own thing but because the team id is set by default it's automatically going to detect any character that we make as a child of that enemy masterclass. so we're going to go ahead and just save this really quick and now we're going to go and we're going to create a couple of the pieces that we need for the actual AI itself. So we're going to right click new folder AI underscore assets. We'll open this up, right click, go to artificial intelligence. We'll add our blackboard 
This one's going to be friendly NPC blackboard. And then we're going to right click again, go to artificial intelligence, behavior tree, friendly NPC BT. So now what we can do though, if we open up the behavior tree really quickly, go to the blackboard, we're going to set two object keys. So we're going to go new key, object, new key, object. Now the first one here, we're going to name this as player. The second one here, we're going to name this as enemy. Now again, just a quick recap, the amount of factions that you create is going to change how many actor object keys you're going to want to make. This way it can differentiate between the different types of factions. So just keep this in mind. Now, what we also want to do, though, is for each of these keys under the blackboard details, we're going to go to key type and make sure all of these are set to an actor type. So we're going to make sure the set to the type of actor under player, enemy, go to key type and do the same thing. So set it to actor. So now that these are set, we're going to go to the behavior tree off of the root. We're going to pull off and run a selector. Now, the selector is going to be the thing that actually kind of dictates what's going to happen. But that EQS function is going to be the thing that tells it what to do. So we're going to right click on the bottom of the selector here, add service and run EQS. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the EQS, EQS request, and we're going to make it so that way what it's going to be running is going to be enemy detection. And then we're going to control D to duplicate. And then we're also going to have it run player detection as well. And each detection is going to be set to the key type that's affiliated with it. So, for example, enemy detection, we're going to set blackboard key enemy player detection. We're going to set blackboard key player. And now what we can do off of this is we can run a selector and then another selector. And then we'll just run a simple wait task. Now on these selectors, we're just going to right click, add decorator, blackboard condition. And then we're going to add this to the other selector at the bottom here. And I just did that by just control D to duplicate it and just dragging it over. Just a quicker way to add some uh, blackboard conditions. And now what we're going to do though with blackboard key, we're going to go if enemy is set. And this one is going to be if player is set but we also want to make sure that if player is set enemy is not set so we're going to control d to duplicate the blackboard base condition and then change the second condition to be if enemy is not set now we also want to make sure on all of these observer aborts both now this is mainly on the top one you don't have to do this for the enemy is not set because it's not going to allow pass through but the blackboard observer aborts float control option up here is going to be something that's going to dictate when it goes and shoots to the branch and it's really going to use the top based blackboard condition or whatever decorator you used as its first choice so whatever is on the top is all that matters underneath it it's not going to allow pass through if it's not set to the, that condition so what we've done now though is we've made it so that way our friendly npc can detect our enemy and our player but now what we need to do is what do, what do we want it to do when it detects both of these so what i'm gonna do is if enemy is set we're gonna move to and we'll set enemy and then under the selector we'll go move to and we'll set player as the blackboard key now another thing to make sure is except acceptable radius is something that if you're having an ai follow the player I would recommend setting it to something like 250, maybe even 150, just something that's a higher value. Otherwise, it's going to be right on the player. But for the enemy, set it to about value of 50. This way, he's in a range where you could do melee damage. So if I go ahead and save this, and I go back to the friendly controller. So we're going to go back to our master folder here, and just open up the friendly controller. Because if you guys have watched or done any AI, you know that we have to add the behavior tree. So we're just going to look for begin play. And then off of event begin play, we're just going to run behavior tree. And then the BT asset we're going to select is just going to be friendly NPC behavior tree. Now, I'm not going to set up the enemy's BT as well. I'm going to just show you how it reacts with the friendly NPC. Because you'll see the functionality where it's setting the player or the enemy. But we're not going to actually put the enemy inside of the world itself. So we'll go ahead and save this. And what we're going to do is on the enemy master we're going to right click create child blueprint class and we're just going to call this enemy npc one so this will be enemy npc one so this will be the first enemy that we create so i'm going to double click and open this up and uh open in full blueprint editor i'm not sure why i did that and then what we're going to do this is going to be the one we're actually going to change the mesh on so we're going to go down to the mesh go to none and we'll just choose one of the meshes here that i have um, i've got a couple of different character packs here so we're going to take this guy and we're going to throw him in move him down 90 degrees and then go ahead and rotate him 90 degrees and then we'll just compile and save so again because he has the ai perception stimuli source registering as source for sight but again we haven't set up this blueprint to be able to be detected by the ai only this blueprint so realistically 
by dragging this guy into the world, going back to the tutorial, and then we'll just quickly create our friendly AI. So we're going to right click and then again, create child blueprint. This one's going to be friendly NPC underscore one. Then we'll open this guy up and we'll do the same thing where we just add in a quick skeletal mesh so this way we can give it actual character representation for how our AI is moving around. So again, we'll go to skeletal mesh. All right, so we got the SK character detective here. So we're just gonna move him down 90 degrees, rotate him 90 degrees, compile and save. So I'll go ahead and I'll just minimize this really quickly and I'll drag our friendly NPC out into the world, but I'm gonna make it so that way he's not able to directly see our NPC enemy. And then I'm also going to go ahead and pull up his behavior tree. Now, before we actually get this started, another thing that I have to uh, we have to add is the component for the AI to actually see the player. Because we have not added the AI perception component to the player. Almost forgot to do that. So we're going to go up to the BP third person character here. And we're just going to go to add AI perception stimuli source. And we're going to make sure to register as source for senses. Click on the add element. Go down to index. Drop down and change it to AI sense sight. And then we compile and save. Now we have all of the components added that we need. So I'm going to bring the behavior tree up here. And then we'll go ahead and we'll click play. Now let's see, uh, AI is not, oh, okay. So we need to make sure we add a nav mesh. I always forget to do that whenever I'm in the moment. So, yep, we're gonna go up to the place actors here, nav mesh bounds volume, go ahead and take it and we'll just scale it out so it's nice and large, encompassing most of our map here. It doesn't have to be perfect, just, you know, within reason. Something like that I think we'll do. And if you guys press P on your keyboard, if you don't know, you'll get this nice little green over coverage that'll show you where your nav mesh is actually like encompassing so this is always nice as well but if i go ahead and bring up the behavior tree now and i click play you'll see the ai kind of goes to me but the second he sees the enemy he's going to the enemy character so if i go and i kind of move a little quicker make it so he follows me he's going to constantly follow me around until he sees that enemy character so right now this is a friendly so he's not going to do anything that he shouldn't be doing but the second that he sees the enemy he's going to immediately move over to that enemy so now this is basically proving that the ai is detecting an enemy type a player type and again i can make five six ten different versions of this character all just using child actors place them in the world and my ai will be able to detect all of them as an enemy type because of the way that the team ID tags are set within Unreal Engine. And just to kind of show you guys as well, all this is is the detection system. This is if the player is detected, this is if there's an enemy detected. And if you set it up to be having like five different interaction types for five different types of factions, you would just set up a bunch of different selectors off of this, or maybe an individual behavior tree for if something is detected, and have it go through and check which faction it's detecting, and then create a behavior system off of that. You can even use this to also create some sort of like reputation system, as well that if the player is seen and if you have like an integer value for example and the integer isn't let's say level four but the player is seen then they're going to attack however if it is equal to four then it's going to go ahead and do a different behavior where they might be more friendly to the player so you can create a reputation system off of this you can create a different faction system and create wars and battles you can create escort quests off of this you can create as many faction types and systems as you want this is just a way to work around that detection issue with the affiliation because now you're setting your own id tag for each team type and just creating child blueprints off of that and from there realistically your imagination is the limit so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video i know i was definitely super excited to find this out there's going to be a ton more videos coming out about this because this is entirely new to me and i haven't seen much information about this anywhere so this could very well be something that a lot of people possibly nobody really has figured out i'm not going to say nobody there's too many people that use unreal engine um, but I haven't found any information about this particularly, and it's an awesome way to do it. So if you guys have any questions about, you know, some things that you can do, go ahead and hit me up. I'm always happy to answer any questions you guys might have as long as I can answer them. Um, and like I said, there are going to be more videos coming along of how to be able to create a more dynamic faction system, how to be able to use this for like reputation control and a whole bunch of cool stuff. This is going to be opening up our AI series to an immense level. So I am super excited, guys. But that's going to close out for today's video, and I hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, stay animated.